So thank you very much for keeping the time. Uh, and uh, so the next speaker is Di Natali, who's going to speak about with, uh, Chinese GS. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Um, as she said, my name is Di Natali. I'm going to talk to you about the Shiny JS package. Now, this talk is going to be very, very short. So if you do want to learn more about Shiny JS, I encourage you to go to the GitHub page. And the readme there has lots of documentation and examples of how to use the package. So what is Shiny JS? I like to think of it as an extension to Shiny. Uh, it's a package that provides a lot of functions that improve the user experience and the user interaction in a Shiny app. Now, I also want to mention that you can also use ShinyJS in interactive R Markdown documents, not only in Shiny apps, and that's something that not a lot of people realize. So I wanted to start with that. So the most popular functions in ShinyJS, which I think is the main reason a lot of people use the package, are the hide and show functions. So here's an example app that uses that. So this is actually an app I built just a few days ago in a hackathon in Berkeley. And if you see the screenshot on the left is how the app looks like when it initializes. And you can see that there's one box that asks for data set input. So when you do input a data set, I use the show function to show the rest of the steps, rest of the app. There's another function called toggle. So you can call toggle if you want to alternate between showing and hiding something. So if you see there's little um, maximize or minimize buttons on each box in the corner. So if you click on that, it'll call the toggle function, which will expand or collapse a box, so it'll hide or show it. So these are simple examples of how you can use show, hide, toggle to make your app a little bit uh, more useful for the user. Now, another set of functions that people do use often in Shiny.js are the disable and enable functions, which should show up any second now. <laughs> so there we go. So again, the slide on the left is what the app looks like when it initializes. This is a different app. Uh, but I use it for a very similar use case. So when it starts, you can see that the upload data button, yeah, you can see that I think it's grayed out and it's not clickable, so it's disabled. And after the user selects the data set, I call the enable function so the button becomes enabled. So again, this kind of just makes your app a little bit more user friendly and, and intuitive. So it kind of, it helps guide your user towards what actions he, they can or should do at each point in your app. Now, one thing I really focused on when making Shiny.js is um, I really wanted to make sure it's as easy and simple as possible to use for the user. So whether or not you're a complete beginner in Shiny or if you've written a lot of Shiny apps before, anyone can really incorporate Shiny.js into their apps very easily and very quickly. So here, this is a very minimal but complete example of a Shiny app that does use Shiny.js. And all this does is when you click on the Hide button, the text input will get hidden. So it's not very useful, but it just kind of shows you, um, you know, how easy it is and how quick it is to use some of the functionality in Chinese.js. Um, so under the hood, Chinese.js actually uses JavaScript to implement all of its functions, but you don't need to know that as the end user. So if you don't know any JavaScript, don't worry about that. That's completely fine. But if you do know JavaScript, there's another function you could use that could be very useful. It's called extend Chinese.js. And what this lets you do is it lets you call your own JavaScript functions from within Shiny with a very familiar R-like syntax. So it makes the communication from Shiny to JavaScript um, a lot more smooth and, and frictionless. And this is good because it means that your apps can be a lot more powerful. And there's actually quite a few common tasks that people often ask that they can do in Shiny. People often ask if I can hide a tab or disable a tab or show the sidebar of a Shiny dashboard programmatically. So these things can be done very easily with a bit of JavaScript. And in the readme on the GitHub page, there's an FAQ section that shows you how to do these common tasks with Shiny.js. One more thing Shiny.js provides is a color input. So a lot of times when people want to provide um, users of their apps with a selection of colors, they a lot of times put a dropdown and they put the names of colors in the dropdown. So instead of that, you could use a color input, uh, which gives you a nice palette to choose from instead. And what I built on top of that afterwards is also a color picker add-in. So you can access it from the add-in menu of our studio. And this lets you interactively choose colors. So for example, if you have a plot with five colors and you don't want to keep having to change the parameters of the plot and then plot it to see what the colors look like, you can select them here. And when you click that, it'll give you back a vector with the actual color strings that you've chosen. So that's a very, very high overview of a few of the functions that it provides. Um, I do always welcome suggestions and feedback, so you can go to the GitHub page or contact me from dinatali.com. All my information is up there. You can also go there to learn some more about Shiny. Um, you can also tweet at me. So do let me know if there's anything you think about it. 
And I just want to say a big thank you to our studio, especially Joe Cheng for Shiny, and also to Jenny Bryan, who was my supervisor. And I think she knew I was working on this a lot more than my actual thesis for a long time. So thanks for being still supportive and encouraging. And to the art community, everyone here knows how amazing they are. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>